particular plaintiff say that way because you know the principle in Hindu law. Even if there is a coparsonary property, joint family property, an individual coparson of the family can have a separate property. He can purchase out of his own independent income. But take example, if that particular person has a broad mind, broad heart, and if he says that, yes, I have got these two flats in plain, but I want to treat this property as a joint family property. Law has termed in Hindu law as calling that way a blending theory. What is that blending theory? Independent separate property is thrown in the common hotspots. That means initially not joint family property, individual separate property, but it is mixed, it is blended with the joint family. And once it is mixed, blended by of a declaration by that member of the family, it becomes a joint family property, though other members have not contributed upon that. It becomes a joint family property. Suppose at the time of evidence, you try to give an evidence stating that way, because other side say that well, it was never a joint family property. You start giving the evidence, that means your client, while recording the evidence, says. Sir, this property was initially purchased by Mr. M, that is my elder brother. It is his separate property, but <coughs> by declaration, he has blended or mixed the property in joint family property. Therefore, I have got a share. Immediately, objection will come from the court. Objection will come from the other side. They will say, no, you are taking us by surprise. This is contrary to the rules of pleading. You have to plead and then to. This had to be considered together. First plead and then prove. Don't take the other side by surprise. Otherwise, party other side will not be able to meet your case. You are taking them by surprise at the time of evidence. Just like we see in the movie, sometimes in criminal trials, in film, somebody comes from the back door and says, Mujhe kuch kai na. That is not permitted in civil matters, my friends. That is shown in film also. That is also not permitted in criminal trials also. But that is an exaggeration. So friends, therefore, you have to make out the case. So the first object is you can't take the other side by surprise. At the time of evidence, you can give the evidence if you have pleaded it. I yesterday gave one more example that is regarding adverse position. Suppose defendant comes with the case when the suit for position has been filed, defendant comes with the case saying that, well, no, I have acquired the property and I am in possession. He has not taken the specific defense of adverse possession. At the time of evidence, the defendant starts stating, no, I encroached the property before 15 years back, though belonging to the plaintiff. I am openly enjoying, I am openly possessing, which plaintiff knows. And print, I am enjoying more than 12 years. That is one of the principles of adverse position. And therefore, I have become the owner. There is no document necessary. I have become the owner. I have got the title by adverse position. This is the law. If you read the section 27 of the Indian Limitation Act, it contemplates extinguishment of a right if action is not taken within a particular period of limitation. Article 64 and 65 of the Indian Limitation Act. Suit for position has to be filed within a period of 20 years. Now, my friends, because of the inaction of the plaintiff, defendant became the owner of the property by adverse position. I am on the point that if defendant, without pleading all these particular facts, that is the defense, start disclosing these particular facts, plaintiff and the court will take objection that you are taking us by surprise. We are considering pleading. Pleading means plaint and written statement. Both the rules are equally applicable to the plaintiff as well as dependent, my friends. So this was our thing. And the last aspect I'm telling you about the object. If you want a particular judgment in your favor, for example, in this partition or this particular title acquired on the basis of the, the adverse position. The position is, my friends, even if you lead the evidence, other side do not take any object. Court may not be also taking much object. And at the time of argument, if you try to rely upon the evidence, there is a complete variance between pleading and court. That is the third aspect. So therefore, 
at the time of writing the judgment judge will say there is a complete variance between pleading and proof you know my friends the difference between the evidence and proof evidence is given for example document is produced it is not a proof once a document is proved then it becomes a proof so evidence can be given according to the pleading and if so therefore you can't give the evidence if there is no pleading and once that is proved it becomes a proof what evidence has said that when proof court has to consider the proof that is what we always say that is the difference we have to take into consideration my friends so now therefore my friends then we will have to turn regarding the drafting of a plaint or a written statement that is the only rules we can't consider here the entire drafting of a plaint and written statement but i am telling you important rules with the help of these certain examples so that you will be able to understand my particular point my friends there are various types of suit i will give for the first certain examples then we will consider order 7 first what are these rules that is the format and then we will consider order 6 my friends take example i always insist to repeat again and again that lawyer must know substantive law when a case comes to you when a client comes to you you have to find out law under which law it is governed take example plaintiff comes to give the instructions to you you record his instructions and what is his contention in substance that he has purchased the plot of land he is the owner of the property but the defendant was allowed to use the property for a period of only 5 years thereafter he is not using that property property is lying vacant when i ask the position he is not giving the position then you have to know so for position is to be filed it's not a case of encroachment it's not a case of a trespass then you have to understand under what provision this case is you have to understand this is a case under section 5 of the specific relief act what section 5 of the specific relief act says that the plaintiff in or if entitled can file a suit for possession in the manner prescribed the word entitled means is most important what is mean by entitled person is entitled when person is entitled tenancy is not terminated i am paying the rent regularly but yesterday defendant bought certain bundas and took a forcible possession can you file a suit under section 5 no the answer is you have to file a suit under section 6 of the specific relief act which contemplates plaintiff can recover the possession if possession has been taken without his consent of immovable property without following a due process of law what is mean by due process of law if if the landlord wanted to recover the possession is required to go in the small causes court or civil court where there is no small causes court he has to file one of the ground under section 15 or section 16 of the mahatra rent control act and then he has to take the decree of possession and then recover the possession through the bill that is the court but here possession has been taken throwing him out of the court out of the house dispossessing without following a due process of law without his consent and then most important section 6 we have to understand is which says that the even though a title is set up against him means what land suppose suit has been filed such a suit is recorded by within a period of 6 months landlord comes and says that no i am the owner i have got a title you have to understand the law law means not only section 6 of the specific relief act but the latest judgments as interpreted by the high court and supreme court what supreme court says what high court says in section 6 title is totally irrelevant 
plaintiff says what plaintiff is required to point out only position and suit has been filed within a period of without following a due process without his consent. This is what required at the time of drafting. Therefore, lawyer must be expert, skillful in substantive law. Take example in the two case, partition suit, which I already told you that. Way. So my friends, in case of an agreement to sell, I already given the example. So you must be aware of the position of law. On the basis of which only if pleading, when I will again give this example, not in detail, but by this particular, just to understand it. Now, my friends, in the light of this, therefore, we are required to consider, and I again repeat that way, lawyer must be being well versed in the position of law, without which you cannot make a drafting of a plaint or a written statement. Now, friends, coming back to the now rules. Yesterday I told you, but I again took the in, in detail, little bit detail. Now, friends, we'll consider order seven first. What order seven contemplates? It is just like a format. It says what plane should contain. That means it is a format, and therefore order four says it must be in conformity with order six and seven. If your plane is not in a format. That is clauses which, which must cover in your plaint. And therefore, in that particular case, you are required to consider that aspect. Now, I will first tell you and I will again repeat it that way. When we consider a plaint, order seven doesn't say that the plaint is divided in three parts. CPC also, no any provision says that the plaint has been divided in three parts. But if we read, Mullah's commentary. If you read certain judgments of the High Court and Supreme Court, you will find that when it is interpreted while considering Order 7 that the plaint has been divided in three parts. And which are those three parts, my friends? It says, first part is heading of the plaint. What is covered in the heading of the plaint, my, my parents? Clause A of the Order 7, Rule 1, subclause A says, the heading, heading, though it is not word mentioned, name of the court in which suit is brought. What does it mean by the name of the court in which suit is brought? That is not name of a particular judge. The name of the court means whether it is filed properly. So it is related to the point of jurisdiction. You are my friends, though we are cannot consider exhaustively point of jurisdiction because it is not our today's subject. But I am tempted to tell you, jurisdiction is three types. Pecuniary jurisdiction, that is section 6 of the Civil Procedure Code. Territorial jurisdiction, it is covered by section 16 to 20. And third type of jurisdiction, jurisdiction according to the subject matter. That is covered by section 9. That means the section 9 contemplates according to the subject matter suit is to be available. For example, when we say suit between landlord and tenant, it goes to the small cottage court. Civil court has no jurisdiction. If it is a matter relating to between the society and a member, suit must go to the cooperative court and not to the court. Civil court. So therefore, according to the subject matter, those section 9 says, what section 9 says of the civil procedure court, all suits of civil nature are to be tried by the civil court. This is the only definition. But how much interpretation? If you open the Buddha, you will find thousands and thousands of authority. What do you mean by suit of a civil nature? And there are two explanations. If suit is related to the office, then it is treated as a suit of a civil nature, irrespective of the fact whether any fees are attached or not. Read this, my friend's commentary. If you have got any difficulty, tell me at any time, I will tell. So there are three types of juridic. So when we say name of the court means a lawyer, when a client comes, you have to first consider pecuniary jurisdiction. You are quite aware, I need not tell you in that case, but I am tempted that if the suit valuation is less than 5 lakhs, it goes to the civil, the junior division. If beyond 5 lakhs, unlimited, 
it goes to the civil judge senior division but in bombay little bit different though that law was challenge that is city civil court act but till today the jurisdiction about 50000 goes to the high court that is what we call as a original side high court has two sides original side and appellate side right from beginning earlier jurisdiction of the civil court city civil court was up to only 50000 in the entire state of maharashtra other than the bombay it is above 5 lakhs but you have to understand this my friend that law was challenged i will not take time that well it is a very big particular matter we can consider at another time this pecuniary jurisdiction has been decided according to the bombay civil court act it doesn't decide in the process according to the civil procedure code if you see from section 25 26 of these the Bombay Civil Courts Act. It contemplates a district judge at the main. There are subordinate other judges, then civil judge senior division and civil judge junior division to whom the powers are delegated. So therefore, first is pecuniary jurisdiction. Territorial jurisdiction means from section 16 onwards. In case of immovable property where the suit is to be filed, that is what contemplates section 16. In case of immovable property, in short, suit is to be filed in the court. Within whose jurisdiction the property is situated? Second, nineteen contemplates where wrong has been done or where the wrongdoer resides, and second twenty contemplates in any other case that is not covered by section sixteen to nineteen, suit is to be filed in the court where the defendant resides or where whole of the cause of action or part of the cause of action are. There lies the skill of a lawyer to know what is mean by cause of action. i am going to tell you something about it but the cause of action is nothing but a bundle of facts that is what the interpretation of the supreme court so that bundle of cause of action will show where in that pur case where suit can be instituted in pune bombay or anywhere or any other particular place where the part of the cause of action are right study it we will get consider it at different time in the future so this is what this particular name of the court and that part is called as heading of the plaint in heading of the plaint it comes only the name of the court and the suit number that comes in the heading the next part is my claims title of the plaint i repeat it is not stated in order 7 not in the cpc this description but you, as a lawyer you must understand plaint has been divided in three parts the heading title of the plaint and body of the plaint for our purposes when we will see the rules of pleading will apply to the body of the plaint of course they apply to the title of plaint also very much so far as order 7 is concerned because order 7 now what rule sub rule b and rule c contemplates b name of the plaintiff first name age occupation and his residence that we are quite aware but i am telling you giving some hints for the purpose of drafting sometimes how the parties are to be this particular described my friends who can be joined as a plaintiff that is also a million dollar question sometimes take example a society is not registered or a company is not registered and wrongly agreement to sale was executed in the name of the society which was not registered not registered means not a corporate body we can file who can file a suit a plaintiff that means it must be an entity entity in the eyes of law if it is not entity if it is not a corporate body it is not an entity if it is not a registered company not an entity then what we have to do suppose property was purchased and thereafter promoter was appointed and six five six persons have come together who should be the plaintiff those five six promoters should be the plaintiffs take example there is an association whether association is an entity in the eyes of law no association is not an entity so suit will have to be filed take example we hear the names of that well the apartment under the apartment act sometimes that question arises the whether apartment is an association or not there are different opinions but to be at safer side why 
if apartment is not entity if not a corporate body objection will come that plaintiff is not entitled to file a suit then who has to file a suit those members of the association will have to come together or if it permits their body come together and file you can't file a suit that will siddhartha apartment there is a different law which can be considered i have considered these cases but time is not much at this stage to explain to you but i am telling you that when who can file a suit it must be an entity legal entity but hindu idol is taken as the entity that means the hindu entity particular a goddess or particular god if it is an idol can file a suit through a pujari that is the shivaite but that is a law laid down by the high court and supreme court so you have to understand who can file a suit so when order seven only says name of the plaintiff description of the plaintiff and residence that you have to understand it if the suit is to be filed by the government or against the government how it is to be described first description comes of the plaintiff that is what we call a title of the plaint so it is the second part of the plaint the we consider a heading then title of the plaint in title of the plaint name of the plaintiff and name of the defendant that we know i must need not explain much because we are regularly drafting that i am only pointing out important aspect take example i see even as on today Lawyers sometimes commit. Maybe a junior may not have come across such cases. Suit is to be filed against the government. How the can we say the the suit against the government? Can you say like this? No. You have to read Section seventy nine of the Civil Procedure. Read with Order twenty seven of the Civil Procedure. In case of government, suit is to be filed. In case of state government. again that particular secretary of that department but first party should be state government of maharashtra so you need not say government state of maharashtra section 79 says how to describe state of maharashtra if suit is to be filed against the central government never say central government i have seen the plaints that stating that central government no we have to say section 79 cpc says union of india So you have to describe as Union of India. Suppose you want to file a suit against the Akash Vani, you have to join particular says Union of India and then say through the Ministry of Broadcasting. This is what the style. Suppose you have to file a suit against the particular this cooperative particular department, state government of Maharashtra. You need not say government, state of Maharashtra through its Ministry of Cooperation and Agriculture. This is what way of drafting. My friends, therefore. while drafting and last important aspect because there are several examples can be given but i am giving the important aspect suppose suit is to be filed by a minor or it is to be filed against the minor you know that when minor is not competent to contract minor is not entitled to file a suit but that is half truth minor can file a suit he can file a suit through his next friend so minor has a right to file a suit barring some exceptions here and there but in that particular case minor can be represented through his next friend civil procedure code if you see the provisions in that particular case which says that when to the next friend next friend means what maybe a natural guardian maybe de facto guardian that is a guardian appointed by the court but if you file a suit without a next friend the plaint will not be accepted at the time of examination he will say no you can't file a suit because it must be through the next friend either natural guardian or a de facto guardian this is what the important aspect to be taken into consideration by friends this one so i think i have made it sufficient on one more aspect if a person is unsoundness of a mind apan mantu na lunatic hai veda hai He is major, but can't file a suit in his own name. He can file his own name, but through again a particular person who is taking his care. That is the next play. This is what about a first aspect I told you about the format of the play in a title of play. That is the second part of the play, and that is A and B description of the play and the defendant in that play. Friends, the next comes in that play case the E. 
clause E, which says facts are very much important. And here starts the third part of the claim, that is body of the print. We consider the heading, we consider the title, and then comes the body of the print. In body of the print, order seven contemplates se several parts are involved. Clause E is very much important for us and for today's lecture, my friend. E says only one word, one sentence. Facts constituting cause of action and we need others. What does it mean? Facts constituting cause of action and when it arose. When it arose contemplates about the limitation. That you have to make out at least how your suit is with the limitation. But facts constituting cause of action means you must disclose the cause of action. You must disclose the cause of action means you have a, you means a plaintiff has a clear right to sue. You means I use the word because lawyer is drafting the Clear right to sue. And if there is no clear right to sue, not properly drafted, then our application under Order 7 Rule 11 will come that plaint doesn't disclose any cause of action, it may be rejected. There is one concept which I will deal at last, rejection of a plaint. Therefore, my friends, facts constitute a cause of action. Cause of action means what? Bundle of facts. What are those bundle of facts? When we consider in order six material facts that we are considered after the order seven is considered. Now I will I will have to repeat the example. Therefore, I told you the very simple example which I have taken in a money suit or in a partition suit. Or let us consider in a petition, because petition, though it is not called a suit, petition in a family court, for example. If you are filing a petition, again the same rule applies. In that particular petition, suppose petition is being filed for a divorce. What you are required to consider? You must know whether you are filing a suit for constitution of the, the, the uh, sorry, section 13 for a divorce or conjugal rights or nullity of marriage. You have to consider and you have to consider the law. Means what? You have to consider the ingredients of those sections. See, therefore, if you say that, well, petitioner is seeking the divorce from the particular respondent on the ground of cruelty, then you must know what is mean by cruelty. Cruelty as defined and as interpreted by High Court and Supreme Court. For example, physical as well as mental. You must have considered there are reported judgments. If a wife is giving repeatedly threat that, well, if you will not give me this particular atom or article, I will commit a suicide. Repeatedly calling this particular wife is not of a bad character. It amounts to a mental, mental condition. That means it is a particular a mental cruelty. Therefore, you have to first decide that well that whether your petition is based on a physical cruelty or mental cruelty or both. If you want to conduct the physical cruelty, then you have to give the examples. You can't say that the petitioner has been treated by particular cruelty. You have to give the instances. Just like when petition will drop, they marry according to Hindu rights, that they live together, husband and wife. But after some years, dependent that the respondent is treating the petitioner with cruelty. And then you have to give the incidents. What? Whether the boiling oil is thrown on the particular the person on the person, whether he is assaulting every day. And if you say that well, he is making allegations, then you have to mention these allegations that you are a bad character. Then you have to give the examples. That is meant you have to make out the case that you cannot take the other side by surprise. That is the object of play. So you have to make out a case specifically, just like I gave the example in a suit based on title, section five or section six. So therefore, in my print, for specific performance, then you have to most important aspect you have to study the specific really bad. In which cases agreement is specifically enforceable, whether there is a concluded contract or not, whether the agreement is wide, whether agreement is wide. 
if it is void or voidable then what the concept you have to study from section 20 to section 30 with which agreements are void or voidable for example there is no contradiction there is no uncertainty there is a mistake of fact several position of law what i am insisting my friends in this body of the claim facts constituting cause of action you have to know the law first and after taking the instructions from your client you have to take those construction this instructions my friends chronologically you have to see the documents and on the basis of that you have to apply the mind that is legal position and you have to mold the facts take example my friends if the widow is claiming the property on the basis of this section 14 of the hindu succession act stating that well at the time of the date she was in possession when her husband died there is no will she is in possession of the property and therefore she claims that right as an exclusive owner if you read the provisions of section 14 of the hindu succession act so while drafting you will have to cover those aspects that is the facts that is the instruction which you have taken from your client who has come before you to mold those particular facts according to the law which when i will tell you in order 6 is called as a material fact material fact is nothing else but facts constituting cause of action if you read by friends the particular provision in order 7 11 clause a if the plan doesn't disclose any fact disclose any cause of action means what when you come in the court of law you must have a clear right to sue if the plaintiff has no share in the property if the plaintiff is not a member of the particular family he is not entitled for a partition and if you file a plaint he doesn't disclose any cause of action against the defendant so disclosure of a cause of action means clear right to sue and that clear right to sue you get only from study of substantive law whichever law it is covered but whether it is title suit whether specific performance suit whether partition suit whether money suit whether suit for malicious prosecution take example it is covered under the tort if you want to file a suit for malicious prosecution what you are required to point out the present defendant who had filed a criminal proceeding against me that is the plaintiff that proceeding ended into acquittal if the plaintiff was not acquitted when he was accused he can't file a suit for this particular malicious prosecution for damages so you have to understand these ingredients under the tort what is mean by tort what is mean by malicious prosecution then you have to say that the litigation ended in acquittal but whether that is sufficient no you have to further say that the complaint or the criminal case was filed without any reasonable cause or probable cause with malicious intent and you have to give all the details of the fact that is mean facts constituting cause of action this is what a lawyer is required to cover the entire skill of a lawyer my friend lies in the drafting of body of the plaint and in title of the plaint in some cases who has to be joined as a plaintiff for which only study of law is required by friends my friends therefore body of the plain contemplates facts constituting cause of action i think i have made myself clear we have to consider further aspect and therefore i am not taking much time on that because time is very limited i was told i have to complete my lecture before 5:45 and 15 minutes to be kept for the purpose of question answer etc 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 this is what my friends clause e which comes in the body of the plain as per order 7 rule 1 clause e now my friends there are other rules also regarding the format of the plain which i will tell you but i will tell you this later on that is clause g h and i but i will first tell you certain other rules of order 7 let us see rule 2 order 7 rule 2 we specifically talks about whether the suit is to be filed against the particular person for recovery of the amount that is what money suit we call it suppose a bank is filing if it is less than 10 lakh the jurisdiction is to the civil court 
otherwise above that debt recovery tribunal so therefore the suit is below 10 lakhs it will go to the civil court now in a money suit in my friends my friends i told you earlier give the example that is what material facts to be given but in that particular case rule two specifically says you must give precisely in the claim a statement of claim what does it mean by statement of a claim that how much amount was advanced what was the rate of interest agreed 10% 12% 18% then how much amount is particular paid by the particular defendant out of that how much principal amount or how much interest is paid how much amount is outstanding what are the other expenses etc these are the particular sub statement and top claim so that has to be said and therefore coming back to the point while examining the plaintiff it is a money suit if your plaintiff is not in conformity with order 7 rule 2 the person would say that it is not in conformity in that this is the meaning of that order 4 sub rule 2 that claim must be in conformity with order 6 and order 7 order 7 gives the format very much important order 6 gives some additional rules of play so that i was giving an example of a money suit even otherwise suppose suit is based on sale of goods certain goods have been sold and the particular purchaser has not paid the price plaintiff is the seller who wants to recover this particular amount he has to sell that will that that purchase order was put contract took place according to the plaintiff supplied the goods defendant received the goods he paid only this much amount that is price but did not pay the entire price and this much price is balance i am just by shortly dictating this is what these are the basic our means must come in the play that is what i told you that whether matter go in the supreme court supreme court will say what is your foundation what is your pleading what is your plain what is the defense these are the foundation in the civil law my friends so far as the civil practice is concerned this is what i was telling you my friends then comes my friends rule 4 or 7 rule 4 this talks specifically about which says if the plaintiff is suing in representative capacity you must be knowing if you are not knowing i will tell you there is one type of a suit known as a representative suit which is covered by my friends or one rule 8 of the civil procedure code in short i will tell you in that case this in short as you understand this is a sort of a public litigation you must have heard but public litigation means this suit cannot be filed directly in the high court public litigation under certain provisions of the constitution is filed that means one person can file a suit one person can file a petition on behalf of others in the interest of the public interest decision in the interest of the society you must have heard about the helmet only one or two person student go in the high court and say that well that provisions may be quash they say we are not only interested entire police citizens or like minded persons are interested that is called a public interest litigation similarly representative suit what is mean by representative suit i will give one example suppose it is a society of particular 500 members society is charging certain maintenance charges say example 5000 a per month all of a sudden without giving any reasons amount is increased to 20000 is it necessary that all these 500 members should go in the court of law no so what is the principle under order one rule 8 if similar per several persons have wording is similar interest now who is interested in challenging that because everybody said we can't afford given from 5000 to 20000 everybody has a similar interest this similar interest right to file a suit which is known as a representative suit for our purpose is drafting if you are filing this suit in the representative capacity take an example there are two villages and 
where particular cows and buffaloes have got right to to eat grass b villages say other whether every villager is required 